Hello humans. Big. It's a word. We have a few others too, like huge, colossal, massive, gargantuan. We use those when big just isn't enough. However, when we try and think about the sizes and scales of things while confronting the mission statement of this series, comprehending the size of the universe, these words are still not enough. Let me explain. I think a wholesome and awesome place to make an analogy is with something equally mind-blowing, infinity. Some of us have encountered the question, what is infinity plus one? George Cantor decided to take that question seriously and ended up coming up with a whole host of different levels of infinity, each denoted by an aleph. The smallest infinity, the one you get if you start counting one, two, three, and continue forever, is aleph null. There are quite a few good videos on this topic on the internet, including this one by Vsauce, where he goes on to explain how each new infinity requires a leap of comprehension as great as the transition we make when trying to understand how big the first infinity is after understanding the finite numbers. It's hard stuff, but well worth investing some effort into. Anyway, this is a very similar problem to the one I want to try and tackle in this video. Let's think of something so big that we can barely comprehend it. For me, this is a kilometre. A kilometre is something you can quite easily see when driving around. Often a stretch of road in front of you goes on for at least an entire kilometre. And you can often see things a kilometre away when you're moving about. Going for a 20 minute walk takes you about a kilometre. Still though, a kilometre is so big that trying to fit it all into your head is probably just out of reach. So this is perfect. We can call this scale big. But wait, compared to a kilometre, there are bigger things. If you assume you can easily understand a kilometre, you assume a kilometre is small, then there's going to be another scale where you lose track again. It gets so much bigger than a kilometre that it can be described as big compared to a kilometre. What's the best way to deal with this? Well, as you can see, just trying to describe the problem is messy, so we should probably start using language and definitions to reduce the problem to words and make it simpler. So we can have big, then we can move to the scale above that, use a different word, huge. Let's say huge is another step, another scale above what big is, two steps above the normal. Great, so now we have a scheme to keep track of how big things get. Just add a new word for each time we have to break our brain. Each time we have to say to ourselves, okay, we are now incomprehensibly bigger again. Damn, this isn't gonna work. We're very quickly gonna run out of words. So let's adopt a schema like George Cantor did with his infinities. Let's use the second Hebrew letter, bet, which is pronounced the same as B, to represent big, and see how far we can get. I want you, the viewer, to feel your mind explode, not once, but several times by the end of this video, and then come away with awe and trepidation at how bloody damn big the universe is. So let's start at bet null, one kilometer. Where is bet one from here? Well, I personally have spent a lot of time zooming in and out of Google Earth, trying to get a feel of how big our planet is. When I zoom out, I try and keep an eye on something I've already tried to picture and got a good feel of. Here's a kilometer along a road near a hotel I stayed in on my honeymoon in Denver, my favorite place on Earth. And you can see in that kilometer is a 20 minute walk end to end. You pass a few large shopping centers, car parks, other stores, and end up halfway through a small park. A very good Sunday stroll. Now let's look at the kilometer from above and try and zoom out until we lose track. Okay, now we've zoomed out to about 30 or 40 miles. That little kilometer is hard to see and you can see the whole city of Denver. Maybe you can keep that in your head, but I've lost track at this point. I can't make that mental leap of how many of those long 20 minute walks I'd have to do to cross this expanse we can see right here. So this is our bet one and laid out before us is 50 kilometers of planet Earth. Where's the next step? Let's zoom out again. At 50 kilometers up, my brain feels like it's starting to snap again. I tried to keep track of the city of Denver's size in relation to everything else, but now I'm completely lost. We can see several states from this height and you can even see parts of Canada and I've run the numbers. You can fit Denver's 400 square kilometers 2000 times into this area, which as you can see, is starting to take on the curve of the planet Earth. This is our bet too. Bet can also stand for broken brain. So measuring this 2000 kilometer line from the Rockies to Lake Winnipeg, how far do we have to go before our brain breaks again? Well now you can reach the whole Earth. This patch of a million and a half square miles can be seen as a sizable chunk of the blue planet. And now we are ready to start getting interplanetary. So if you want to fathom just how big a planet is, you're going to need to, you'll need a brain three orders of magnitude bigger than the one you currently have. Let's zoom out until we can see the moon. The moon is in a nice place. It's quite a bit further than you expect. It's a good place to mark another bet, a bet four, being a quarter of a million miles away. 
Zooming out further to the point where the orbit of the Earth and the Moon becomes tiny, and we are looking across a vast distance. With the orbits of our nearest planets, Venus and Mars, we are looking at a distance of over 100 million kilometers. We can't see the whole solar system yet, but already the planets are too small for us to really understand at this level. Maybe you did this in school, where your teacher took everyone out to the football field with the beach ball representing the sun, and a few golf balls and whatnot representing the planets, and then got everyone to walk out to the right distances and put them in their two scale orbits. Even just trying to understand the distances of the inner planets at this scale is something our brains can't really handle. A golf ball on a football field? Pluto, it turns out, on this scale, is a few miles away. That's exactly what this video is here to illustrate. This is BET5. We aren't done. This is just the inner planets. As I zoom out further, so we can see the entire solar system up to Neptune, the outermost planet, you'll notice that the four orbits of the inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, get so small you can barely register them. This is, again, another scale of comprehension, our bet six. The sun, that big ball of plasma so big that it warms our face from 90 million miles away, at this scale is tiny, one four thousandth of this distance. That makes it less than a pixel if you're watching this on a 4K screen. So where do we go from here? We've zoomed out so much that we should be able to get a feel for the distance to the nearest star, right? Well, not yet. I'm going to need to zoom out quite a bit further. If I zoom out so far that we can only just see the last orbit ring of Neptune, where is the nearest star? There it is, Alpha Centauri, four and a half light years away. We've got a bit of a problem though, it's still too far away to comprehend. Using parallax, look at how barely it moves against the much further away galactic backdrop as we rotate around the sun. We are currently at bet 7, but it's not enough. Look at it this way. I am now face on with our solar system, with Alpha Centauri way off to the left in the plane. You can see the orbit of Neptune, and it fits roughly 100 times into the width of this screen. How much further away is Alpha Centauri to the left? 100 times. Even that is probably a bit too much to cope with, but let's zoom out until we can fit our sun and Alpha Centauri into the screen, and call that bet 8. There's a distance of 4 light years. Now the scales of comprehension are going to get a bit harder to measure, but let's try anyway. Let's head out at the speed of the distance we just reached, 4 light years every second, and after about 10 seconds we will have travelled roughly 40 light years. If we turn around and look back at the solar system, we are on the outer edge of a sphere around it that contains a thousand stars. That's way more stars than we can comprehend, so a very justifiable candidate for bet 9. Keeping track of how far we went in that 4 light years shows this is already a size bigger than we can comprehend. How far do we have to go before we've passed through millions of stars? Well, going to a notable landmark here, Barnard's Loop, along with Orion's Nebula and many others, we need to travel over a thousand light years. A sphere with a radius of a thousand light years will contain dozens of millions of stars, which is already tens of thousands of neighbourhoods of stars like the one our sun is in. Bet 10. Now if we did that exact same leap in comprehension one more time, i.e. tens of thousands of spheres just like it, each containing tens of thousands of neighbourhoods of stars, then we get the whole Milky Way galaxy. I'm going to count two more scales of comprehension for this step, as both of the last two were quite a bit bigger of a leap than normal. So now we're at bet 12. We've had to break our brain 12 times to get far enough to even get a tiny feel of how big our galaxy is. At this point, it's worth mentioning something we missed a while ago. We are counting scales of comprehension, each one a whole order of magnitude bigger than the last. It's not like we have counted to 12. It's like we've counted to a number with 12 zeros, a million million. But even the number 12 itself is big in a way our brain can't handle. Studies have shown that the brain has a limit to the number of things it can handle at once in its working memory. And that limit is 4. So even if you take this video very seriously and diligently try and sit down and comprehend each step, not moving on to the next scale until you've got the current one in your head as best as can be, and then try and do the next one and hold both in there together and then the next one, you will have gotten lost before you've even left planet Earth. Understanding the size of the universe is actually scientifically impossible. It's so big, it's impossible in ways we couldn't have even imagined. So why stop now? Let's really drive the point home and go all the way. The next big step is to understand the size of the distance to our nearest spiral galaxy, Andromeda. It's over 2 million light years away. If I try and fit both our galaxy and it into the same screen, you can see how small they both are, and this is definitely another scale of comprehension in and of itself, our bet 13. If we zoom out again, to the point where even that distance shrinks to almost nothing, we can start to see the nearest galactic clusters. Our local group, a tiny cluster, is barely visible here. There is Virgo, Norma, Coma and others. This is Bet 14, although we still can't see the whole Virgo supercluster in one screen. 
If we zoom out so we can see a billion light years across, we can see the whole supercluster, as well as the super supercluster it is in, called the Lanier Kia supercluster. And we can easily call this Bet 15. I feel like I'm starting to go insane, but I think we only need two more steps. The volume of space and galaxies we can see on the screen will fit into the visible universe roughly a million times. I will go at the fastest speed the simulation software, Space Engine, will allow and just head out. As you can see, we quickly get lost in the vast cosmos. If we can picture a thousand volumes of the last step, and then another thousand of those, we will be at the limit of the scale of the visible universe itself. So let's wrap up and say the big number we want is bet 17. Counting bet zero, we have had 18 steps. 18 orders of magnitude. Again, not 18 times bigger, 18 orders of magnitude, 18 scales of comprehension bigger than we can comprehend. Oh, and we only went up. Vsauce, in another video, reached a mind-shattering conclusion. Humans stand right in the middle of all this. Our scale is in the middle, smack bang in the middle of the smallest Planck scale and the largest universal scale. In this very way, we've been counting. So if you want to go all the way down as well, you'll need another 18 scales of comprehension. So the real bet value of this universe is 36, according to my count. So long, humans.